This is the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Can I trust our federal government? Um, is the bear Catholic? Does the Pope live in the woods? No, I do not trust our federal government. Coming up next month, four Arizona congressmen are taking the bull by the horns, and Sarah Palin is lauding their get-together. Paul Gosar, Trent Franks, Matt Salmon, and our guests today, David Schweikert, are scheduled to discuss the IRS and other abuse scandals on July 1st. We will talk with Congressman Schweikert in just a moment. Governor Palin is back on Fox News Channel in full force. Sarah Palin highlights a Louisiana lawmaker who makes a party switch. Bill Maher slammed again, this time in a commentary from Larry Menti. And the week started with Father's Day wishes from Governor Palin. Just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman. First, he is a congressman from Arizona representing the 6th District. He was a Palin pick in 2010 and then re-elected in 2012, and we are happy he could join us today. Representative David Schweikert, welcome to the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. No, this is my idea of fun. Excellent, sir. We like to hear that at a big get-together. Speaking of fun, trying to crack down on some of the quote-unquote fun going on in Washington, uh, you are scheduled for the 1st of July to sit down with fellow Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar, Trent Franks, and Matt Salmon, and you'll be hearing directly from constituents about their concerns with the federal government. How, how did this come together, and what is the hope here? What do you want to accomplish? Well, well first on the hope side... Um, you know, as we continue to dig deeper and deeper into many of the what we consider the bad acts of our federal government, and it's more than just the IRS. We think we have some things we need to discuss and dig into coming from both the Forest Service, the EPA. It became the decision that we needed to do an entire town hall, invite the public, because what we're finding is, particularly on the IRS scandal, um, this conservative group or this Tea Party group had this experience. Another one on the other side of the state had almost the exact same thing happening. And we need to put everyone in the same room and start putting the story truly together. Governor Palin calls this field hearing a perfect way to kick off the 4th of July week and usher in Independence Day. And isn't that right? Representatives actually listening to and talking with those they represent? Oh, it, it, look. Arizona is just a, a terrific state. We do lots of town halls here. But what's powerful about this is it's not just us hearing, but it's also the the activists hearing each other. The ability to bring everyone together and say, let's walk through our common experiences. Let's find out where things are working and where the federal government has gone off the rails and is being abusive. Now, as far as all of the abuse, the IRS, I know, is high on the priority list. What have you seen in recent weeks after doing your homework on this topic? How out of control was the Internal Revenue Service uh, in these uh, situations that we saw with Tea Party groups and other groups targeted? Well, look, it's already an outrage, and it feels like every couple of days we're learning more about how systematic this was built into the culture. But one of the arguments that I'm starting to get my head around is – this is what you're going to get from big government. Um, and, and let me explain. What are most organizations, what becomes their number one objective? Protection of the organization. And if you work for the IRS or EPA or Department of Energy or anything like that, and you start to believe that by electing Democrats or electing people of the left, you're going to see your organization, your bureaucracy grow in power and 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 influence, I think it starts to become pandemic in the culture of big government to play these types of games. I think you rattled them off a little bit in the beginning, but uh, maybe we could go a little more in depth. What are the other issues you expect to address? We, we know there are plenty of concerns with this administration and D.C. as a whole. So other than the IRS, what else are we going to hit on at this meeting? Well, well, there's some that are particularly affecting those of us out here in the Southwest. Um, we have a large, large power plant that we've that's been updated multiple times to fairly clean technology, and now the EPA is coming in and demand, demanding something that's fairly radically, uh, let's face it, on the expensive side, and it's going to change water rates, our ability to have agriculture in the central part of the state. It's going to even affect the water settlements we have with Native American communities. 
we think the EPA is just being abusive to those of us out here in the Southwest. Governor Palin is praising you and your Arizona colleagues, saying we need more members of Congress to engage we the people in town hall style meetings. And I know you agree. You just said it happens in Arizona a lot. Perhaps your day will be a springboard here for other reps across the country to hold similar field hearings because, sir, not every state is Arizona, that's for sure. Well, and it's also important not only as a member of Congress to be hearing from our constituents and what they're experiencing in their lives, but it's also sometimes very, very healthy for others to hear each other. So it becomes sort of a, a conversation of the entire community. Palin also pointed out a poll from last January. It showed 53% of Americans believe the federal government is a threat to their own personal rights and freedom. Now, if that poll were taken today, those numbers would surely be higher. It's hard for people to believe how far we've fallen here and how fast to the point where most Americans feel their government is a threat to their liberty, not just a bumbling bureaucracy that we've talked about for a while, but an actual threat to liberty. You and your Arizona friends getting ready to meet, you seem to understand this. Do, do we have enough people in Washington to help you in this fight? No, no, but it is fascinating. Even finding people, uh, members of the left, who finally are pulling the the blinders off and understanding what this administration is up to. Um, it is it is amazing how many of them kept looking the other way, kept looking the other way. And I also got to tell you, I fault sort of the mainstream media. It feels, and I think demonstrate that until they had the issue of the Associated Press having their phones wiretapped, do you think we would have really heard much about this story? Just like we ne- didn't hear much about Fast and Furious and so many of the other scandals out there, I think finally the mainstream media is stepping in saying, oh, you wiretapped us, we're going to start now telling the public what's really going on. Now, if constituents want to participate on July 1st, what do they have to do? Well, first off, we're going to be holding it up in Prescott, which um, for a lot of my folks in the Phoenix area, they're going to love because it's a bit cooler up there. We're going to be getting together in the afternoon around 4 o'clock. And what I would recommend is if you're in Congressman Salmons or Gosar or Trent Franks or myself, David Schweikert, take a look at our websites. Hopefully you follow us on Twitter or Facebook. We're going to be posting up more and more details as this next week goes on. That sounds good, Congressman. And what is your website? Um, it's just schweikert.house.gov. Okay. And, and let me spell that. It's a top last name. And most people end up go- going to Google anyway. It's S C H W E I K E R T. And moving forward here, sir, we need people in office like yourself, like Gosar, like your other friends in Arizona, and those of us out of office like Governor Palin and just everyday citizens to, to really keep a check on things here. Because if the, you know, if the administration is trying to get out of usurping things by you know, doing things a different way, isn't that the only way if we the people and those we elect you know, keep a check on things to get through this? It's, it's not only that, but there's one other thing. And, and this one's a little more complicated and a little harder to talk about. It's not enough anymore to care and passionately want to defend the Constitution and go to meetings, whether it be Tea Party or Republican or other activists. You now need to learn how to tell that story. Do you get involved in political campaigns? Not, not debating societies, not groups that sit around the table and talk and talk and talk but actually take the message to the street. Do you put up a yard sign? Do you put on a bumper sticker? Do you find a candidate that you believe in and walk door to door to help them? We now need to take what we know and take it actually into the neighborhoods because I hate to say the folks who are control freaks, the collectivists, understand they gain power through the ballot box. We need to understand we defend the Constitution through the ballot box. Congressman Schweiker, thank you so much for taking the time. Be well and best to the family. And uh, say hello to Charlie. It is done. As a matter of fact, he's looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who don't know, he's a famous dog who has helped the congressman on his campaigns and whatnot, and that goes a long way, let me tell you. All right. You're wonderful, and you take care. Bye thank now. you, sir. 
Sarah Palin's second go-around with Fox is off to a rousing start. She was on Fox and Friends and had a chance to talk with Senator Ted Cruz. Then she took part in an important special called Cashin' In, talking about our federal government's many abuse scandals along with Eric Bowling. Great to see Governor Palin back on TV on a regular basis. The Democrat Party is turning so left they're losing more longtime members. Albert Guillory, a state senator in Louisiana, says the welfare state is only a mechanism for politicians to control the black community. And he asks people to join him in abandoning the government plantation and the party of disappointment. Sarah Palin provides a link to Guillory's powerful remarks on Twitter and Facebook. Guillory, a longtime Dem, now a Republican. As Bill Maher keeps it up, calling Trig Palin the R word for a cheap laugh, others continue to flock to the defense of the Palin's youngest child. A commendable commentary from Larry Menti this past week, who asks all of us to stop using the R word because it hurts people. People with some of the most beautiful souls that you'd ever want to meet. We thank Larry for speaking up, and we invite you all to watch the commentary. A link is available right on saranet.net. Sarah Palin started the week with Father's Day and wrote, Happy Father's Day to the great dads across America. Thank you for supporting your families, setting good examples of working hard, and selflessly sharing your time and energy. And thank you for the strength you provide the country's foundation. God bless our fathers. We wish Governor Palin's dad, Chuck Heath Sr., a great friend of the show, all the best. And, of course, all the great dads out there, thank you for all you do. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page, or you can follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. Now, our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. This week, the House failed to pass the Farm Bill due to a strange pairing of Tea Party Republicans and Democrats. The Democrats didn't like the changes to the $800 million food stamp program, and Mr. Obama said he would veto it if it passed. The Tea Party Republicans who voted against it had the guts to stand up for what they believe in, which is a smaller government and a balanced budget. They also know that the food stamp program should no longer be buried in the farm bill. Us conservatives don't think it's a good idea to combine bills just to blackmail Congress into voting for it. That is precisely what has caused government spending to get wildly out of control. It is a shame that the Republican-controlled House doesn't try to do things differently when they have the chance, just once. Just because the food stamp program historically has been buried in the Farm Bill doesn't mean it has to remain. They should take SNAP out, which represents 70% of the cost, and reform the whole program. Instead, they choose the status quo because it is politically safe. Government will not get smaller until Republicans recognize what most Americans already know, that the status quo has got to go. This is Sarah Steelman for Serenet Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. And don't forget the Palin Update, including Steel Resolve, is now on demand and available for download. So just head to saranetradio.net, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, follow along on Twitter at Saranet Radio, at Kevin Shola, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. We're on Facebook, so like Saranet Radio and like Kevin Shola. Palin Patriots is our new feature on saranet.net. Check out the writings from our great panel of contributors, including Martha Zoller. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Just go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman and everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Congressman David Schweiker. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.